Censored beeps in this video are classified names or locations that are withheld from public hearing and are therefore edited for legal reasons from the SCP Agency. In association with the SCP website, secure, contain, protect. This video contains disturbing and violent content. Viewer discretion advised. The SCP Foundation is a secret organization of scientists who are devoted to collecting and containing all the supernatural objects and creatures in the world for the sake of protecting the rest of mankind from them. SCP stands for Special Containment Procedures and their unofficial motto, Secure, Contain, Protect. Items contained by SCP are classified as one of the following. They're either safe, which are items that can be reliably and safely contained and can be handled safely in the proper procedure conditions. Euclid, which means they're unpredictable and harder to contain than the safe objects, and Keter. These objects require extensive and precise containment procedures, and most Keter objects pose an enormous threat to humanity. SCP-1916 Object Class – Safe An instance of SCP-1916 consists of six hard sugar confections of the type commonly referred to as jawbreakers or gobstoppers. Designated as SCP-1916-1 through SCP-1916-6. Chemical analysis indicates that SCP-1916 are primarily composed of sugar and trace amounts of common food additives and colorings, as well as significant quantities of ink. Each individual candy is spherical, measuring approximately 3 centimeters in diameter, and is brightly colored in a distinct pattern. SCP-1916's anomalous effects manifest when an individual candy is consumed by a human being. Within 10 to 20 minutes of consumption, the individual's weight will increase or decrease by a fixed percentage based on which candy the subject has consumed. No physical change in the subject's size or mass has been observed in conjunction with this effect. The subject will function as though the gravitational field of their current environment has been significantly altered. Subjects testing SCP-1916 have in certain instances demonstrated an ability to jump or carry well in excess of normal human ability, and in several instances have proven able to escape Earth's gravitational field entirely as a result of their own physical ability. This effect lasts for approximately 90 minutes before gradually dissipating, and test subjects who survive the effects of SCP-1916 show no indications of any form of long-term illness. At present, the Foundation is in possession of 738 unique instances of SCP-1916, each identical in packaging and composition. Each instance of SCP-1916 is individually wrapped and contained in a cardboard box, with the individual candies held in a plastic tray within the box. The front face of the box features a stylized image of a child wearing a transparent glass helmet over his head and riding on the back of a Saturn rocket in outer space, emblazoned with the product name, Dr. Wondertainment's Zero G Wiz Moon Rocks. SCP-643, Object Class, Safe. SCP-643 is a collection of 79 chocolate candies. Individual instances of SCP-643 do not appear to have notable aesthetic differences from normal chocolates, and on average weigh between 100 and 160 grams. Instances of SCP-643 have a much lower melting point than ordinary chocolates, and have been observed to melt at temperatures as low as 15 degrees Celsius. If any portion of SCP-643 moves into a liquid state, its anomalous properties will manifest. While it's in a liquid state, SCP-643 will become highly mobile and will start to move to the nearest edible substance. When a suitable substance is found, SCP-643 will cover as much of its mass as possible. Any substance that is covered with SCP-643 will begin to exude a strong pleasant aroma. 
Organisms that consume SCP-643 become instances of SCP-6431. Instances of SCP-6431 will possess the same desirability as any edible substance coded in SCP-643. However, note that instances of SCP-6431 are not covered by SCP-643, which is digested normally. Any organism that views an instance of SCP-6431 will attempt to consume it regardless of any previous relation. Organisms who consume portions of SCP-6431 instance will describe the experience as highly pleasurable. SCP-643 is recovered from a freezer located inside a bakery in Jacksonville, Florida, where police had arrested three employees for cannibalizing their co-workers and several of the bakery's patrons. Agents embedded in a local police department noted that SCP-643 had caused the incidents and recovered 79 instances of SCP-643 from the bakery. Witnesses were administered Class C amnetics, and SCP-643 was classified as safe in 1978. SCP-1335 Object Class Safe SCP-1335 is a fortune cookie identical in appearance to a standard fortune cookie manufactured by Wonton Food Inc. It displays the anomalous effect of releasing approximately 100 milliliters of liquid every hour. The liquid released from SCP-1335 is composed primarily of water, but contains traces of lead and calcium as well as an unidentified organic compound. SCP-1335 is contained at the restaurant in 19... Upon arrival, Foundation agents discovered SCP-1335 in a fountain being displayed as a genuine Buddhist artifact. At the time of the containment, the restaurant had begun an advertising campaign encouraging customers to come and anoint themselves with the blessings of Confucius. The owner of the restaurant, employees, and customers present at the time were administered Class C amnetics and a standard disinformation campaign was established. Despite extensive testing, the liquid released by SCP-1335 has not been found to possess any anomalous properties. SCP-1335 contains a strip of paper within its shell. Efforts to remove this object without damaging SCP-1335 are ongoing. SCP-1335 is contained in a standard safe class containment unit at site. The containment unit is fitted with a drainage system and the collected liquid is disposed as level 1 anomalous waste. SCP-156 Object Class Euclid. SCP-156 is a group of exactly 181 pomegranate arrows. The number of instances of SCP-156 is constant. When one is ingested or destroyed, it's replaced instantaneously with a new one among the largest group of contiguous instances. After leaving the group, the instant will spoil normally, after which a new instance will appear. When all instances are destroyed simultaneously, all 181 instances will reappear randomly at the location of one of the destroyed arrows. Attempts to measure the time between destruction of one instance and the appearance of a new one using high-speed cameras have so far failed. If SCP-156 is ingested between March 21st and September 20th, subjects display no signs of infection until noon of September 21st, when all vital processes abruptly cease. A similar effect is observed immediately when SCP-156 is ingested after September 21st. Despite being technically dead, post-mortem examinations of subjects have been unable to discover a cause of death. Subjects appear to have been in perfect health, aside from any pre-existing conditions. Infected subjects remain in this dormant state until noon of March 21st, when life processes restart. Subjects remember little of the intervening time period. While most subjects are entirely unaware that any time has passed since their apparent death, some claim to recall a pale white male face and a wilting pomegranate tree. Subjects continue to die and reanimate annually on September and March 21st, respectively, until killed by another cause. Reanimation only occurs from deaths caused by ingesting SCP-156. After undergoing a single death reanimation cycle, subjects begin displaying high levels of distress and paranoia as time approaches September 21st. Furthermore, subjects will take extreme lengths to avoid taking any sort of risk or danger to their person. Even if they have displayed risk-taking behaviors prior to ingesting SCP-156. Over the course of multiple death reanimation cycles, these psychological symptoms become more pronounced. Eventually, physical wounds on subjects will begin to emulate burns and puncture wounds. Many subjects gain a phobia of dogs and dead plants after 3-5 to five animations. SCP-156 is kept in a refrigerated storage unit 
COVID-19C, except when removed for experimentation. Infected subjects should be kept within a secure storage unit unless the experiment's parameters indicate otherwise. SCP-156 came to the attention of the Foundation after the incident in Greece, after people died in September 21st, 19 without apparent cause. The Foundation became involved after locals reported the return of several of the dead who had been interned in above-ground vaults the following spring. SCP-207 Object Class Safe SCP-207 refers to a crate containing 24 Cola brand cola drinks. The bottles are designated SCP-207-A to 207-X. SCP-207-B is currently the active bottle for testing, and no other bottles are to be opened without authorization from two level 4 researchers. All bottles have been clearly labelled to aid identification. The liquid held inside these has been confirmed to be identical across all of SCP-207 and should not be ingested outside of supervised testing. The liquid has been classified as SCP-2071 and is to be treated as a Class II chemical hazard. SCP-2071 does not appear to alter with age, however the active testing bottle should have its protective cover kept on outside of removing liquid for testing. Mass spectroscopy and chemical tests have shown higher than usual concentrations of caffeine and sugars, along with The practical effect of this is, when a subject drinks SCP-2071, they will effectively no longer need to sleep or rest. In addition to removing the need for rest, SCP-2071 also causes an increase in motor, reaction, and psychological functions. The increase is linear in progression, with an estimated 50% increase every 6 hours. The practical application of ingestion is that the subject is able to think, react, and move faster than others who have not ingested SCP-2071. Mental proficiencies show the IQ of the subject to rise in line with other increases. However, SCP-2071 does not alter the body of affected subjects. No subjects have lasted longer than 48 hours during testing, with the cause of death varying from massive internal organ failure to exsanguation due to major artery ruptures. Subjects also begin to show stress after roughly 24 hours, usually making each movement extremely carefully in order to avoid accidents. SCP-207 is stored in a waterproof locking metal container. The key is issued to the current head researcher of Site Biocontainment Area. SCP-207 is retained inside this area at all times, and all personnel entering the area are checked for any food or drink items, in addition to any other searches required. Any staff seen ingesting SCP-2071 are retained for future study, with all Foundation clearance levels removed. SCP-377 Object Class Safe SCP-377 is a box of LaChoy brand fortune cookies. The box was full when it was recovered from the remains of and has since restocked itself regularly every 12 hours. The cookies within the box are individually wrapped and are, according to all tests, completely ordinary. Each cookie contains one 18mm by 58mm piece of paper, on which a fortune is written in blue ink. All of the properties are consistent herein with a box of cookies from this brand. However, the fortunes contained within each cookie are not consistent with those provided by the standard product. These fortunes appear to be specific to the individual opening the cookie, and have shown thus far to be 100% accurate, ranging from vague indications of coming success to specific predictions regarding personnel's personal lives. The fortunes are not, however, always positive. 
It's unknown whether the fortune cookies actively predict future events or in fact cause these future events to occur. SCP-377 is kept in the personnel break room, third cabinet to the left of the refrigerator. Any personnel desiring a cookie from SCP-377 may take one, and only one, cookie every 48 hours to ensure that all personnel get a share. Personnel read their fortunes at their own risk. Despite the practical benefits of SCP-377, many personnel have outright discouraged the recreational use of it. Following SCP-377's prediction of the deaths of several personnel, a request was submitted to upgrade its class to Keter. This request was denied, citing a lack of evidence that SCP-377 had any actual connection to the causes of these deaths. SCP-757 Object Class Safe SCP-757 is a fruit-producing tree similar to a Prunus persica, that being a peach tree. It is 3.63 meters tall, and the texture and properties of its wood are identical to a Malus domesticus, that being an apple tree. It's easily broken, damaged, and burnt, and its leaves are identical to those of the ordinary Prunus persica. Every dawn, SCP-757 produces new fruits which are collectively designated as SCP-757-1. Growth takes five minutes on average, although the size of the fruit is directly proportional to the growth time. Instances of SCP-757-1 remain in place for the duration of the day, and at dusk fall to the ground and rot away rapidly. The amount of time an instance of SCP-757-1 takes to rot is directly proportional to its size. Human beings viewing SCP-757-1 while it remains attached to SCP-757 display a minor compulsion to consume it. Instances of SCP-757-1 are universally reported to be extremely sweet and delicious. If a subject consumes any part of an instance of SCP-757-1, a new organ will form in the anterior of the subject's abdomen, and the process is reported to be very painful. Over the course of a week, a new fruit of the type consumed by the subject begins to form inside of this organ, causing further pain and visible swelling. When the food is ripe, it's forced up a tube leading to the esophagus and ejected from the mouth, distorting the subject's tissue in order to pass. It almost always causes permanent damage in this passage, despite the fruit itself being distorted to some degree in the course of the ejection. The object regurgitated is always an ordinary, perfectly formed specimen of the fruit type initially consumed. SCP-757 has been observed to produce the following types of fruit in decreasing order of frequency. Peaches, plums, apples, pears, watermelons, bananas, pineapples, strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, kumquats, kiwi fruit, lemons, and in one case, pumpkins. There is presently no cure for SCP-757's effects. If the new organ is surgically removed before fruit regurgitation, it regrows at an identical rate to that of the first growth. Testing to determine a physical, chemical, genetic, or foreign cause of the effects is pending. SCP-757 has been transplanted to a garden plot at Biosite 103, which is to be under constant surveillance. Access to SCP-757 requires authorization from a researcher with level 3 clearance. The plot is cleaned of all rotten instances of SCP-757-1 twice a month, and they are incinerated on site. SCP-757 was discovered in after several reports of people regurgitating fruit appeared in a local newspaper. It was eventually discovered in the backyard of an abandoned house and a large amount of rotten fruit was found at its base, along with several malnourished corpses.
SCP-2941, Object Class, Euclid SCP-2941 is the collective designation for an anomalous population of fruits and vegetables. SCP-2941 only superficially resembles their non-anomalous counterparts and differ from non-anomalous fruits and vegetables in both behavior and growth patterns. SCP-2941 instances possess limited sensory awareness, are capable of locomotion, and furthermore, some have shown the ability to speak, though how SCP-2941 instances manage to vocalize is currently unknown. Under optimal containment conditions, the physical size of each instance of SCP-2941 conforms to the average size of comparable specimens in its particular species. However, rapid growth will occur when any instance of SCP-2941 is presented with verbal or physical affection, as well as any other kind of positive reinforcement. Instances will also exhibit this property when engaging in pleasurable activities. No upper bound of SCP-2941's enlargement has been shown through on-site testing and by foundation computer modeling. Proper demoralization must be maintained on a regular basis as any instance left alone for a period of between 3 to 5 hours will be growing at a noticeable rate. Foundation researchers have hypothesized that each instance of SCP-2941 has an innate, highly positive self-image that must be countered at all times. A few examples of the currently contained SCP-2941 are as follows. SCP-2941-1 is a red apple that pleasured itself by rolling around in a circular path with its containment cell until researchers were able to convince SCP-2941-1 that any movement at all will awaken a massive parasitic worm living inside of it. SCP-2941-3 is a melon and is very quickly to notice nearby individuals and will repeatedly vocalize questions regarding the quality of its roundness. To minimize misunderstanding on SCP-2941-3's part, researchers must be sure to always respond to each query with the statement, You are a hideous cube. SCP-2941-11 is an eggplant. As long as SCP-2941-11 has been under the Foundation's care, it has repeatedly vocalized only one sentence with variation. Who boo I love you. Dash 11's morale has, through much experimentation, shown to decrease the most when addressed with the carefully enunciated response, You should be hurled into the trash. SCP-2941 entities appear as a fennel, banana, green pepper, Persian lime, turnip, mushrooms, peach, and cantaloupe. All known instances of SCP-2941 are kept within separate and fully isolated biocontainment chambers within Site-103. Instances are provided with 4-6 to six hours of direct light from an overhead fluorescent. Each instance of SCP-2941 are checked at least four times a day to confirm that specimen morale levels fall within mandated guidelines. Any measurements of specimen morale levels falling above standard containment parameters are reported immediately to the current project head. SCP-971, Object Class, Safe SCP-971 is an old and worn delivery menu printed on a standard sheet of 21.6cm by 28cm printer paper. The name of the delivery service is listed as Quick and Ready Meals. No records of such business exist and the parent company named on the menu denies ownership of said food delivery service. The menu lists the company name, a phone number, 1-800, and several different food items, each preceded by an item code. The food items are typical fast food items, including hamburgers, chicken sandwiches, chicken fingers, assorted seasoned fries, and carbonated beverages. The menu features no pictures or price of the food, and the typeface and design are both minimal and simplistic. When holding SCP-971 and calling the phone number listed, the caller will be sent to an automated menu system. The automated menu will prompt the caller to input the item codes for the food they desire, and then for their credit card number to pay for the order. 
Once the item codes and credit card number are input, the automated system will tell the caller the total price, thank them, and then disconnect the call. The caller's credit card will be immediately charged for the total price of the order, plus the local tax rate for prepared food. Once the call disconnects, about 15 or 20 minutes will pass. Afterwards, a paper bag with Quick and Ready Meals logo will appear near the caller. SCP-9711 almost always appears when all potential observers' attention in the vicinity is diverted elsewhere. Remote video observation of SCP-9711's appearance has been reasonably successful, as it simply appears instantaneously with no visual indication of its method of delivery. SCP-9711 will contain the same items chosen in the phone menu and all the items will be cooked and prepared to normal food safety and inspection service health standards. Aside from the method of delivery, the only other anomalous feature of the food delivered is the undefinable meat used for the listed burgers, sandwiches, and other meat-containing items. The meat used in the food is from assorted animals on the EEC endangered species list. Further DNA testing on the meat as well as reports of sudden weight loss and muscle mass loss in animals from several zoos confirms meat from pandas, cheetahs, red wolves, sand cats and other species recognized as endangered. Currently, all meat tested from meals that SCP-971 provides are from animals that are commonly known endangered species to the general public. The food does not seem to cause any compulsion to eat it, nor does eating the endangered animal fast food meals cause any overt physical harm to the subjects eating it. Occasionally, other copies of SCP-971 are found outside of Foundation control. The scanned and printed copies of SCP-971 have the same abnormal properties of the original. These copies are to be confiscated and destroyed. Due to the lack of mimetic effects or mobility from SCP-971, this SCP is considered safe and requires only minimal containment procedures. SCP-971 is kept in its labeled file folder and locked in the file cabinet 26 in Site-19's file vault when not being used for testing. Keys to both the file vault and file cabinet 26 are held by on-site senior administrative members and access to SCP-971 for testing is allowed only with explicit written permission from level 4 personnel or higher. SCP-1354 Object Class, Safe. SCP-1354 is the collective designation for 12, 11, 250 milliliter volumes of soup stock designated SCP-1354-1 through-11. Despite their age, instances of SCP-1354 show no signs of spoilage and have in fact proven edible. Additionally, instances of SCP-1354 are exothermic and maintain a constant temperature of 37 degrees Celsius and have shown no signs of evaporation. Instances of SCP-1354 are capable of written responses to verbal communication via the manifestation of letter-shaped pasta. Unless otherwise prompted, responses will remain on the surface of SCP-1354 for three to four minutes before submerging and vanishing. For interview purposes, instances of SCP-1354 are to remain intact. Each instance of SCP-1354 appears to contain the consciousness from one of several dozen individuals reported missing from Oregon between the dates of the 4th of July, 19... In the 2nd of October, 20. All missing individuals corresponding to instances of SCP-1354 share several characteristics, most notably age and status as the head of a single parent household. The whereabouts of the children of SCP-1354 instances, as well as additional missing persons believed to correspond to uncontained instances, remain unknown. SCP-1354 was brought to the Foundation's attention after persistent rumors of a talking soup began circulating in the local homeless shelters and soup kitchens. Further investigation led to the procurement of this instance, as well as further 11 instances of SCP-1354 being obtained during a recent canned food drive. Class B amnestics were given to all witnesses. SCP-261 Object Class Safe SCP-261 appears to be a large black vending machine with no front glass panel and a small keypad on the right side. Internally, SCP-261 appears to be a basic vending machine equipped to vend food and beverage items. 
After a key was made and the front door opened, no abnormal materials were found, and it was determined that SCP-261 has never actually contained any food or beverage items. The keypad, while connected and operating correctly, does not activate any of the dispensing mechanisms. When money is placed into SCP-261 and a three-digit number is entered on the keypad, SCP-261 will vend a random item. SCP-261 has not accepted any currency other than yen, with rejected currency being deposited in the coin return slot. It's unknown how these items appear, however, SCP-261 will not operate when the door is open or when recording devices are placed inside. The number entered on the keypad has no effect on the item vended, nor has any pattern been detected. Items are always some form of snack food and typically have bright, attention-grabbing packaging. SCP-261 is capable of operating with no external power supply, but operation in this state will cause unstable vending to occur much more quickly than normal. If SCP-261 is used several times in a short period of time, or large amounts of money are entered before an item is vended, SCP-261 will start to dispense bizarre items in unknown languages. While still food, their suitability for human consumption is often non-existent. Items dispensed by SCP-261 are reviewed by site health and safety officials before consumption. Failure to do so releases the Foundation from any obligation regarding negative effects. Items deemed dangerous or useful to research are confiscated by site security, with financial compensation provided in proportion to money spent. Any access to SCP-261 is approved by staff with level 2 security clearance or higher. Any and all items dispensed by SCP-261 are recorded along with the amount of money entered and the amount of time elapsed between uses. Currently, SCP-261 is used only 10 times in a 24-hour period, with no transaction exceeding the equivalent of 500 Japanese yen. Testing approved by Site Command is not under these restrictions. SCP-261 was recovered in Yokohama, Japan. SCP-261 was brought to the Foundation's attention after investigating an urban legend about a magic vending machine that was circulating on the internet. SCP-261 was found in a back alley behind a large shopping center, with a handwritten sign saying, Out of Order, in Japanese taped to it. SCP-261 has no marks or identification of any kind, and no locals remember when or how it came to be in its current location. SCP-348 Object Class Safe SCP-348 is a white ceramic bowl patterned with light blue flowers, measuring approximately 20 centimeters in diameter and 9 centimeters high. While no maker's marks are present, the Chinese characters for thinking of you, Zhang Zhi Ni, are etched into the side of the bowl. While in the presence of an individual afflicted with a minor ailment or injury, SCP-348 will fill with soup. While the ingredients present within the soup produced by SCP-348 vary, young subjects have consistently stated that they enjoyed the meal sometimes stating that it reminds them of their parents' cooking. Children who eat from SCP-348 several times often express a feeling of contentment, stating that, though they are eating by themselves, they do not feel lonely. It has been noted that occasionally, after soup produced by SCP-348 has been consumed, a message will materialize on the inside of the bowl. Words produced on the inside of the bowl appear to be printed on the ceramic consistent with existing markings. The message that appears will be in the language most familiar to the drinker of the soup. After several hours, the words disappear. SCP-348 was acquired shortly after rumors of a child living in Beijing, apparently possessing remarkable recovering abilities, came to the Foundation's attention. Investigation revealed that the child in question originally discovered SCP-348 in the attic of their house, and had come to rely on it after receiving insufficient attention from their parents. 
the child's parents, both full-time workers, refused to comment on the relationship with the child. Testing has revealed that in the event that someone older than 18 years of age attempts to consume soup created by SCP-348, the individual will find that they are less inclined to finish the meal. Some such individuals will remark that something is missing. Most will simply state that the soup was nothing out of the ordinary. Further studies carried out with older subjects indicate that though messages will appear for individuals older than 18, the appearance of the message is worn and faded. SCP-348 is kept in a standard locker at Site-19. SCP-1794 Object Class Safe SCP-1794 is a giant sapient creep fruit, capable of speech, hearing, and sight by unknown means. SCP-1794 has been in Foundation care for years and shows no signs of decomposition. Psychoanalysis during interviews has revealed that SCP-1794 suffers from dissociative identity disorder and acmeophobia. Known identities of SCP-1794, which resemble historic social activists and revolutionaries, have been classified as Activist Pitcher SCP-1794-A and Oppressed Freethinker SCP-1794-B. Identities SCP-1794-A and SCP-1794-B acknowledge that they are fruit and believe they act for the good of fruit kind. Following one of the previous events, a personality classified as Latin American Revolutionary has been observed and documented as SCP-1794-C. SCP-1794 is kept in a large containment tank at site. The surrounding area is fitted with speakers and an intercom. SCP-1794 can request audio media such as music or literature to be played over the speakers. However, all requests are to be approved by Level 2 personnel. SCP-1794 can request to hold a conversation, either in person or over the intercom. All requests are to be approved by Level 2 personnel. It's recommended that SCP-1794 should not be allowed contact with fruit. SCP-1794 was discovered in the 1956 when Mrs. of Santa Modesta contacted authorities, claiming that her breakfast was planning an uprising. Foundation agents successfully retrieved SCP-1794 and transported it to the SCP Foundation. Mrs. was administered Clad C amnesiacs and returned to her home. Since its capture in 1956, SCP-1794 has grown in size and intelligence. Research is still underway. SCP-109 Object Class Euclid SCP-109 is a standard issue United States Army canteen, circa 1899, made of a tin alloy and fitted with a heavy cotton cover and a black leather strap. When opened, the item is seen to be nearly full of water. A seemingly unlimited amount of water can be removed from the container without changing the water level or the item's mass which remains a consistent 3.16 kilograms. Probes of the interior of the container reported an estimated volume of 2.8 liters and a shape consistent with the outside. The water in SCP-109 is of a slight blue-gray tint with concentrations of 20 ppm of tin and 170 ppm of other electrolytes. The water remains at a constant temperature of 19 Celsius, but can be heated or cooled when moved to another container. Upon the item's delivery at Site-19, it was given the object class of SAFE. As tests were conducted on the item, uncertainty surrounding test results prompted Research Director to upgrade the object class to Euclid. Subjects imbibed water from SCP-109 and reported that it was very refreshing and, despite the metal content, very tasty. Urine samples from subjects were normal. Water from SCP-109 was administered to various plant organisms, all of which remained very healthy and showed no malign symptoms. One proposition for a test which has been discussed for some time has been involving a combination of SCP-109 
and SCP-402. Due to the risk of losing one or both items or creating a hazardous situation, this test has never been conducted. SCP-294, Object Class, Euclid. SCP-294 appears to be a standard coffee vending machine, the only noticeable difference being an entry touchpad with buttons corresponding to an English keyboard. Upon depositing 50 cents US currency into the coin slot, the user is prompted to enter the name of any liquid using the touchpad. Upon doing so, a standard 12-ounce paper drinking cup is placed, and the liquid indicated is poured. 97 initial test runs were performed including requests for water, coffee, beer, soda, non-consumable liquids such as sulfuric acid, wiper fluid, and motor oil, as well as substances that do not usually exist in liquid state, such as nitrogen, gold, iron, and glass. Each one returned a success. Test runs with solid materials such as diamond have failed, as it appears that SCP-294 can only deliver substances that can exist in liquid state. It's noted that after approximately 50 uses, the machine would not respond to further requests. After a period of approximately 90 minutes, the machine can restock itself. It's also interesting to note that many caustic liquids that would normally destroy paper cups seem to have no effect on the cups dispensed by the machine. Researchers have punched in several requests where SCP-294 has displayed out of range on the entry pad. It's theorized that SCP-294 has a limited range of collection and cannot reach into alternate universes or dimensions. There are no standard special containment procedures on file for item SCP-294. However, only personnel of security clearance level 2 or higher are allowed to interact with it. SCP-294 is currently stored in the second floor of the personnel break room and is monitored by two guards of security clearance level 3 at all times. SCP-1863 Object Class Euclid SCP-1863 are two competing soft drinks sold exclusively within the town of Alabama. SCP-1863-A is a sparkling lemon-lime soft drink with hydrogen used in place of the dissolved CO2 sold as Lime Liftoff from the Citrox Corporation. SCP-1863-B is a non-caffeinated root beer and cream beverage known as Sarsaparilla Cream, sold by Carl's Caffeine Club. Neither of these organizations have any record of operating within the USA prior to the discovery of SCP-1863. However, the Citrox Corporation reportedly operated out of the city of to Luxembourg from 1982 to 1999. SCP-1863-A and SCP-1863-B are both highly addictive, despite having identical composition to equivalent non-anomalous soft drinks. Both SCP-1863-A and SCP-1863-B are capable of reacting to specific phrases, mainly praises or criticisms of the specific qualities of the SCP-1863 instance, such as flavor, chemical content, and appearance. Praising the respective SCP-1863 variety while condemning the competing variety appears to dampen the addictive effect. However, criticizing SCP-1863-A or SCP-1863-B while in the presence of the respective instance can lead to various chemical reactions, such as pH fluctuations, combustion, or solidification when introduced to the human digestive tract. Both varieties of SCP-1863 are highly mutagenic, capable of drastically altering the functions of human organ systems. SCP-1863-A mutates the diaphragm, causing it to act like a flotation bladder. 
It is capable of inflating with hydrogen gas, either from the atmosphere or from SCP-1863-A, and allows for humans who have imbibed a sufficient quantity of SCP-1863-A to float up to 3 meters above the ground. Failure to regularly imbibe SCP-1863-A after drinking it results in the diaphragm collapsing, leading to suffocation without mechanical assistance. SCP-1863-B instead targets the respiratory and circulatory systems and removes the necessity for respiration, allowing the human body to function without the need for oxygen, instead relying on carbonation from SCP-1863-B or carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to perform bodily functions. Subjects who have drunk a sufficient quantity of SCP-1863-B are capable of indefinitely staying in environments where a human being cannot survive without a breathing apparatus, such as underwater, in gas chambers, or at high altitudes without any detrimental effects. Failure to regularly drink SCP-1863-B after drinking it for the first time results in the inability for oxygen to be used in the body, and as the body cannot intake carbon dioxide without assistance from SCP-1863-B, death inevitably results within 24 hours of last consumption of SCP-1863-B. Furthermore, SCP-1863-A drinkers will be highly aggressive towards individuals who have drunk SCP-1863-B at any point in their life, with the converse being true for individuals who have drunk an SCP-1863-B. If an individual drinks both SCP-1863-A and SCP-1863-B within an 89-hour period, an anomalous chemical reaction will occur between the hydrogen and carbon dioxide in the two drinks causing the digestive system to inflate, and finally... SCP-458 Object Class Safe SCP-458 is a large-sized pizza box from Little Caesars of their hot and ready variety. It's made of simple cardboard, measures 25 inches, and weighs about 20 to 20.49 grams, depending on toppings. As a result of the unusual nature of SCP-458, measurement of weight is inconsistent. What makes SCP-458 an oddity is that, while appearing to be an ordinary pizza box, when it comes into contact with human hands, it instantly replicates within the holder's subconsciously preferred choice of pizza, down to favorite sauce, cheese, crust, and topping. It's not limited to Little Caesars brand, as pizza from all major pizza chains as well as local and even handmade pizzas have been produced. There seems to be no limit to its ability except that it cannot make anything but pizza, and its toppings must be edible by normal human standards. The box is also rather indestructible, as all tests to destroy or dismantle the box have proven fruitless. It's assumed that the box is semi-sentient, having at least enough telepathic or empathetic ability to sense what the holder's personal choice regarding pizza are. After constant testing showed SCP-458 seemingly infinite power to generate pizza, it has henceforth been placed inside the canteen at Site-17 for free use by personnel. After its open usage has been allowed, personnel morale has shown to have sharply increased. SCP-458 is considered safe and therefore stored in the staff canteen at Site-17, with no access restrictions required. SCP-871 Object Class, Keter SCP-871 is a collection of 237 cakes. Instances of SCP-871 vary widely in appearance and size, covering the entire range of foods described by humans as cake. The smallest observed instance of SCP-871 was a miniature cupcake of a mass of 15 grams. The largest yet observed was a 22 kilogram bomb cutchen measuring 2 meters in length. When any instance of SCP-871 is consumed by a human or a collection of humans, it is replaced approximately 24 hours afterward with a similar cake. This cake will appear on a flat surface in the vicinity of the location where the previous instance was eaten. If any of these cakes is substantially damaged through any means other than being eaten by a human, including being eaten by a non-human animal, it will be replaced instantaneously. The mechanism by which instances of SCP-871 are replaced is currently unknown. 
SCP-871's danger originates in the consequences of an instance not being eaten. Any instance of SCP-871 which is not consumed will cause a new cake to be created in its vicinity after 24 hours. While this is similar to its normal replacement behavior, the original instance will continue to exhibit the same properties, replicating if damaged and continuing to replace itself every 24 hours. This behavior has been observed in all cases where more than 10% of the mass of an instance remained unconsumed. As there is no known mechanism for halting SCP-871's replication, any uncontained instances could replicate exponentially, quickly becoming unmanageable. No maintainable plans for the containment of more than 20,000 instances of SCP-871 have yet been devised. It's estimated that an uncontrolled outbreak originating with a single instance would render the Earth uninhabitable within 80 days. Each reoccurrence of SCP-871 is maintained within a separate, locked concrete cell on a metal platter permanently affixed to the surface of an immovable table. Each cell housing reoccurrence of SCP-871 is to be monitored on a 24-hour basis via controlled circuit camera with individual feeds checked every 15 minutes. Upon creating an instance of SCP-871, three Class D personnel are to be escorted by armed guards to its cell, where they are to be sealed in with the instance and induced to consume it. No more than one hour may be spent performing this task. In cases where additional motivation is needed, the termination of one of the Class Ds assigned to an instance of SCP-871 is authorized. Upon completion of the consumption of an instance, no participants may exit its cell until both they and the room have been thoroughly searched to confirm that no portions remain. The platter, table, and room are cleaned in the preparation of the next instance.